Bishop of Olympia, and I'm glad to be checking in on the progress you and those you might be sharing this journey with are making through our book, our Lenten book, and to share some of my reflections at this point. I've been most intrigued early on with the idea Shiley puts forth regarding disestablishment. Of course, this is the counter to establishment, which quite frankly the Episcopal Church has been for most of the course and history of our country. But I would agree with him, this is not the case any longer. What is interesting is that we often act as if we are still that established church. We are proud of saying that more presidents have been Episcopalians, etc., although that will certainly not be the case long, if it even is still. The National Cathedral is essentially an Episcopal church, but we as an organizational reality, that part may be the most crucial for us to look at in establishment mode, and the one to be most concerned about as well. The way I have put this before is that in the 50s of the last century, while the country was building the military-industrial complex, we, the church, we were going about building the religious-industrial complex. We chose the model of church growth and management. It pretty much matched what people were going through in the society, what they saw, how they managed, which we are wont to do, and it's not all bad. In fact, it was quite successful from the standpoint of growth in numbers and assets, and in many ways. But we have certainly left that behind now, and the church is struggling mightily with how to deal with that change, still trying to operate in that old model when almost everything has shifted to something new. What I love about this discussion in the book is the idea posed that this time, the time we are living in right now, is the closest we have been to the primitive ancient church, the early church. We have circled around and now find ourselves back in that reality, same one they lived in. On page 40 of the book, the author writes about the promise of disestablishment, of leaving this behind. He writes, A new spiritual hunger has emerged as people seek meaning, purpose, community, and sustainable ways of living on this earth together amidst global diversity. There are profound new opportunities for Episcopalians in today's changed American setting. Many people in today's world are looking for an authentic, lived faith, not just a set of propositions to believe in, rules to live by, or an institution to belong to. They are eager to tap into ancient wisdom that helps them make sense out of life in today's world. They are aware of the diversity in American life and wonder how various differences can be reconciled rather than divide us. They are seeking a word of healing, hope, liberation, and promise, a trustworthy word in which they can abide and find life. They want to contribute toward building a trustworthy world. He goes on to write, by accepting disestablishment, we can become again, like our ancient ancestors, a sent people. This is what I'm most excited about so far in this book, the idea of accepting disestablishment so that we might rediscover what it is to be a sent people. Please join the conversation about our Lenten book selection, People of the Way, Renewing Episcopal Identity by Dwight Shiley by going to my blog, bishoprickle.com. That's bishoprickle, all one word, dot com. There I invite you to comment and read the comments of those who are joining in this walk with us. All are invited. Blessings to you all.